nice early breakfast. Got your coffee and you're ready to go now. Um, once again, um, I just wanted to let you know that um, we will be having a last call for the helper tickets. So we, Janice, what time do you close? 10.30? I think it's 10.30 is last call, so you have to have them in this morning if you haven't put them in. The sales room is also last call for the sales room. 10.45. 10.45 for the sales room, so probably the same for the helper room. Um, yeah. You know, don't let that last stall you need to buy. <laughs> those tickets that you want to win the prize, go buy. I've gone before and gone home and said, oh, no wonder I didn't win anything. I forgot to put my tickets in. I actually did that. Um, but anyway, I hope you had a really nice breakfast. At this time, I'd like to introduce our artist. And um, Sarah has been with Modern Doll for a long time now. She's also our webmaster. And if you go on our website, you'll see she does a wonderful job. So please join me in welcoming the mushroom peddler. And does, don't we love her costumes? for attending my event. Uh, you may redeem them for up to $15 off at the Mushroom Peddler's table if you visit me there today. Oh. Yeah. Um, I hope that you enjoy this very punny tale about Chuckle the Cheshire Cat. If you don't, then I guess it's off with your head. <laughs> Chuckle was well known throughout all of Wonderland for his white grin and quick wit. He always had jokes and puns ready to make people laugh. One bright day, he was floating over a pond, practicing some of his latest jokes on some goldfish who didn't seem very impressed. When he heard some voices in the distance, he quickly turned invisible so he could sneak up and use a pun at the opportune moment, as was his usual way. As he came closer, he recognized the Mad Hatter and the March Hare. He listened for a short time to see what they were talking about and was just about to surprise them when the Mad Hatter mentioned a word that Chuckle had never heard before. Friends, why yes, I madly agree. We really should get some to come to our tea party, like Alice suggested. She said that friends always make things more fun. The March Hare nodded and replied, It is true, nobody should ever be without one. Why, according to Alice, friends will laugh at all your puns and jokes. Come, let's see where Alice has wandered off to. Surely she can help us find lots of friends. Quickly, it is nearly tea time already. And with that, they moved out of sight, as Chuckle sat floating in the air, puzzled. Friends, he thought, what is this wonderful thing called a friend? I must get one right away. They say no one should ever be without one, but here I am, completely and utterly friendless. He slowly became visible again, for being invisible takes a lot of concentration, and he was much too distracted now. Chuckle settled down on a tree branch and pulled a thinking cap out of midair to help him think things over. Before the Hatter had mentioned friends, he had mentioned what this Alice looked like. So Chuckle thought, since I know I've never seen an Alice before, maybe I just need to look for new things that have blonde hair and blue dresses, and maybe I'll find what. But how should I lure an Alice so I can catch it? What might one feed an Alice friend? He took the thinking cap off and he stuffed it back into his air stash. Then he rummaged around in the air trying to find some tea and tea cakes. But alas, all he could find was one last eating cake and a drinking bottle that he had forgotten he still had. 
He hesitated because he loved eating and drinking treats. They were always so exciting, and he wanted to use them himself. His tongue growled, and he rubbed it thoughtfully. Then he decided that this was a worthy enough cause to give them up. After a quick visit to Tweedledee and Tweedledum, who always had lots of random interesting things lying about their part of Wonderland, he had everything all ready to go with the cage he had borrowed. To make sure the trap would be successful, just in case the owl's friend already knew about drinking potions, he found some of the largest, prettiest wild strawberries he could find and dripped a few drops of potion on each one of them. He knew it wouldn't work as fast as drinking the drink directly, but it was potent stuff. He put the last half of the bottle away for later. He brought everything to the pathway that seemed most likely to have friends traveling on it, since everyone in Wonderland eventually ended up on the Queen's Way. He had found a good spot where it would be difficult to miss the pretty bowl with the large, beautiful strawberries in it. He tried to make it look as tempting as possible. Far too excited to turn invisible, he hid nearby in the leaves to see if a friend might get caught in his ambush. Meanwhile, a young girl was following a random path, hoping it would lead her the right way, although she wasn't certain at all of where she needed to go. Everything in this strange land was so confusing. So far that day, she had met several very strange creatures who could talk, and had had many odd adventures, thankfully. After some ups and downs, she was finally back to the height she had been before she had followed that elusive rabbit down the rabbit hole. It was just about then that she noticed something unusual ahead next to the trail. She slowed down, worried that really anything could happen here. But all she saw was a bowl next to the trail with some of the largest and prettiest strawberries in it. Her tummy growled loudly as soon as she saw them. She was so hungry. She said to herself, surely strawberries can't cause any excitement to happen, right? Well, in this place, nothing is safe, but I'm so hungry. And quickly, every single strawberry was gone. They were delicious, and she licked her fingers clean. Now, this is very unladylike, isn't it? She scolded herself. But whoever left this bowl here rudely forgot to include napkins. After several minutes passed, she was relieved that all that seemed to happen was that her tummy stopped growling as much. But just as she took a couple of steps further along the path, she suddenly felt that dreaded sensation of shrinking. Oh, no, not again, she sighed. Everything around her seemed to grow as she shrank down to about the size of a mouse. Before she could orient herself and figure out what to do next, something large and furry closed around her and lifted her into the air. Next thing she knew, she was dropped into a cage. Frightened at this new development, she peeped out between the bars and found a furry face of a purple cat with the biggest toothy grin she had literally ever seen on its face peering back at her. She backed away as far as she could. Aha! An Alice! I caught one! It got a funny sly look on its face then, and then it quit. How very nice of you to drop in! A little visit is always pleasant. After all, who doesn't love having a captive audience? It is the key to having real fun. As it said this, it held up a large key that it had just locked the cage with. Then it began laughing hysterically at its own puns as the key disappeared into thin air. This was the last straw for the tiny girl. She wasn't even scared anymore, just very, very put out. She put her hands on her hips and raised her tiny voice, trying to sound as fierce and commanding as a tiny person could while sitting in a cage. Alice, why does everyone in this strange place keep calling me Alice? My name is Ivy. <laughs> Chuckle froze for a moment, suddenly worried that he might have caught something other than a friend. If you are not an Alice, then what are you? He asked. He quickly drank some of the drinking potion himself, so he would be just about her same size so he could examine her more closely. She continued, I'm an Ipling, of course. They keep telling me that this Alice is a human girl with blonde hair and a blue dress. 
and that just doesn't describe me at all. He squinted doubtfully, so she glanced down at her dress and faltered a little. Well, okay, so I happened to put on my blue dress and a white apron this morning, and I do have blonde hair, but just look at me. Do humans have feet like these? <laughs> she held her tiny bare foot out of the cage and wiggled three tiny toes. And do humans have hands like this? She held out her hand and wiggled four tiny little fingers. And my ears! Have you ever seen a human with ears this huge and pointy? He tilted his head, then pointed. But, um, your ears are tiny. I thought, well, okay, so they are tiny right now, but compared to my head? He seemed stumped. But then he shook his head and said, well, actually, I haven't ever seen a human or an ape before, so how would I know how big their ears are compared to their heads? Ivy closed her eyes and rubbed her temples. Well, all I can tell you is that I'm not this Alice you seem to be looking for. Please let me go, and if you know how I can get back to my normal height, I would be very grateful. Today has just been a very, very odd day for me so far. Choco wasn't sure he believed the girl's assertion that she wasn't an Alice, but he decided to humor her. Very well then, I will call you Ivy if you want me to, but I'm not ready to let you go. I set out to catch a friend, and you fit most of the description, so you will have to do unless I find a replacement. Surely there are more kinds of friends than just the Alice variety anyway. So let's test this out. I will tell you a joke or a pun, and you will laugh at it, okay? What do you call a parade of rabbits hopping backwards? Ivy's face turned a little red. She was so tired of all these people who made no sense at all. Chuckle couldn't wait for an answer. A receding hairline, he blurted out, and laughed so hysterically that he turned upside down in the air. He followed it quickly with another one. Did you know that time flies like an arrow, but fruit flies like a banana? <laughs> the girl folded her arms defiantly and was so quiet the chuckle finally became truly concerned. She wasn't laughing at his jokes, so maybe she really wasn't a friend after all. In desperation, he blurted out several of the best ones he could think of in a row. Why did Humpty Dumpty decide that autumn was his favorite season? Because he had a great fall. <laughs> what do you call an alligator in a vest? And an investigator. <laughs> Why do seagulls fly over the sea? Because if they flew over the bay, they would be bagels. <laughs> <laughs> he paused when he heard a groan. The corners of her mouth were ever so slightly turned up, even though she was pursing her lips and shaking her head. Encouraged, he threw in a few more for good measure. Why don't pirates know the alphabet, other than the letters A, B, and R, of course? Because they keep getting lost at sea. <laughs> What's the difference between a piano and a fish? You can tune a piano, but you can't tune a fish. Oh, and speaking of fish, what do you call a fish with no eyes? <laughs> he then decided it was time to pull out one of his emergency jokes, one that he himself didn't understand at all, but somehow it always made everyone laugh. What is the difference between a dirty old bus stop and a lobster wearing a brassiere? One is a dusty bus station. The other is a busty crustacean. <laughs> Chuckle turned upside down again and made a funny face with that last one. And she finally gave <coughs> My goodness, 
those are such terrible puns. But you tell them so well, and you are so cute, that I can't even be upset anymore. Now, please tell me, why did you put me in this cage? So I can have my very own friend, of course, he replied. Well, you're not going to make any friends doing things this way, she told him. You must make friends, not trap them. But what do you make them out of? The very confused Cheshire Cat inquired. No, I mean you must meet people, and then they become your friends over time as you get to know each other. It starts with saying hi, shaking hands, and introducing yourself. And then you have fun times together and help each other. Chuckle thought this over. Then he held out a small fuzzy paw. Hi, I'm Chuckle. Ivy smiled and held her own little hand out. Hi, my name is Ivy. Please let me out of this cage. I need to find my way back home. After shaking hands, Chuckle said, If I let you go, then you might not be my friend. She let out an exasperated breath. Well, this method really isn't working. You can't force someone to be a friend. They have to do it willingly. And you really can't expect me to be all cheerful right now. I am really having a peculiar day. I've been taller than trees, and now I'm so very small. And to top it off, I'm sitting here trapped in this silly bird cage, being bombarded with terrible jokes. Do you really think that would make anyone very happy? But even as she said this, she couldn't keep a tiny smile from betraying her. He stared back at her. So, does this mean you don't want to be my friend then? Well, maybe if you let me out, I might consider it. But how do I know you won't just run away? Trust is one of the most important friendship rules. I will tell you what, I suggested. If I can tell you a pun that you haven't heard before, and that makes you laugh, will you let me out? Then we can work on maybe becoming real friends. Chuckle nodded, certain he could hold out and not laugh because surely he already knew every single pun and joke in Wonderland. She was silent for a minute as if thinking. Then she asked, what is brown and sticky? All sorts of ideas popped into Chuckle's mind, but none of them seemed at all funny. So he wasn't sure what to answer. After a short wait, Ivy triumphantly revealed a stick. <laughs> Chuckle's eyes widened, then he giggled. Then he let out some loud belly laughs. Then he laughed as only a Cheshire cat can, until his eyes were watering and he couldn't float anymore. And then he fell down into the bushes below, holding his sides. That is so funny, he gasped once he could talk again. I will stash that one for later to try on the pondfish. Surely that one will make them laugh. Ivy had a true smile on her face now, but she asked again, will you please let me out and help me? I really want to be my normal size again. He nodded, still chuckling as he floated back up to the cage and absently reached up and pulled his eat me cake out of his air stash. The cake was almost as big as him now since he had forgotten the excitement that he had shrunk himself. So its weight made him fall to the ground again with an oof. He found this all the more funny and laughed at himself. Ivy looked down through the cage bars, relieved that he hadn't hurt himself. He took a small bite of the tasty cake, which returned him to his normal size. Still amused, he pulled out the key and unlocked the cage, then carefully reached in and brought Ivy out onto the path and put the cake next to her. She took a bite, then quickly returned to her normal size. Just then, Tweedledee and Tweedledum came rushing around the corner along with the Hatter, the March Hare, and a few others. Ho oh, there, exclaimed Tweedledee. There she is, finally. Alice, wherever have you been? Ivy stamped her foot, folded her arms, and pouted. I am not Alice. I am Ivy. I keep telling everybody that. Why won't anyone believe me? I believe you, said Chuckle. Friends trust each other, right? We are friends now, aren't we? We have told jokes and puns and laughed together, and 
we have helped each other with these? They all looked at Ike. Then the Hatter asked, But then, if you are not Alice, then where is she? They were interrupted as a white rabbit in a waistcoat rushed around the corner and down the trail. He skidded to a stop when he saw the crowd blocking the pathway, but not quite in time to prevent himself from running right into Tweedledum, who was rather rotund. So the rabbit bounced right off. The rabbit stood, brushing the dust off of himself while muttering, I'm late, I'm late, I have to go to the queen for a very important date. The group quickly moved aside. The rabbit was off again, as swift as could be. They were used to him always being in a rush, and they knew the queen of hearts didn't like to wait. Ivy had to resist the strong urge to hurry after him. No, Ivy, she scolded herself. No more chasing rabbits, at least not for now. As they were about to begin speaking again, a young girl with blonde hair, wearing a blue dress and a white apron, surprisingly similar to Ivy's, came rushing down the path towards the same direction the rabbit had rushed. She stopped for just a moment to catch her breath. Then she began to ask, which way did... But before she could finish her question, everyone in the group silently pointed down the trail. She then noticed Ivy, and she raised an eyebrow and remarked absently, curious here and curious here. Then she shrugged and smiled and hurried away, waving as she went. Thank you, my friends. I'll catch up to that white rabbit eventually. They all watched her go. Then Chuckle's eyes widened. She called us friends. Did she just turn us all into friends? Who was that? Let's not be silly. What are you talking about? Asked the hatter. Everyone knows Alice, don't they? Although, he mused, glancing at Ivy. The question, it seems, is just... How many Alices are there? That Alice that just ran down the path, at least I think it was that one, told us that friends are people who like each other enough to spend time together, among other things. We were following her because we like her and want to help her with her quest. In fact, I suppose, when we think of it that way, we have all been friends with each other all along. So you have many friends, Chuckle. Now, the second Alice, he pointed to Ivy, who almost corrected him again, but convinced herself to hold her tongue. Can't be one of our friends, too. But how will we ever tell them apart? Tweedledee and Tweedledum each took one of Ivy's hands and said, How do you do? And shook her hands both at once until she thought she might fall over. It made her giggle. Chuckle looked at all the people he liked to spend time with. And then he got a twinkle in his eyes. He announced loudly, Well, isn't this excellent? Let us celebrate. Aren't you all glad we are friends? You are all the very best. You better believe it. I love you all a lot. They all groaned, but with the occasional giggle, as they all moved on towards Alice and the White Rabbit, and whatever adventures their future together may hold. Chuckle floated around them, continuing. I'd be muffin without you. You just do not know how much you mean to me. We are not your average friends. <laughs> you guys are terrific. Let's party. <laughs> Ivy shook her head, but grinned as she went along with them. She whispered to herself, This is an underland. This is Punderland. <laughs> I love the way she does her COAs. So chuckle the Cheshire Cat. Um, and you see, say, so let's. If not, get her to We're waiting for the official. While they're passing that out, I'll just mention I, I almost was late with the dolls because they got lost. The prototype got lost in shipping for about a month and a half. So luckily, I'm going to get them all done in time to get here. Okay, does everybody have their bag? Yes. Are we good? Yeah. Okay. 
Go ahead and open them. I'm just gonna do this because that's really pretty. I'm mess it up. There's a little bit of glitter. Oh, there's strawberry candy in here. That goes with the story. I know they sent this candy and my little Addie wanted to eat it all. <laughs> At least you got somebody to help you eat it. No, I don't. I can't let her eat it. Oh. All right, so look how cool. So here's what I'm gonna say that's crazy. Like looking at the pictures, this, he looks just like my nephew. In the <laughs> but my nephew has this, he does, oh my gosh, he's, oh, he's shimmery. Look at that, like he's got shimmer. Oh, I love him. Oh, I really like, first of all, he's, he's purple. He's a Cheshire cat, he's purple. He's wonderful. Oh my gosh. Wow. He is. But my, I, my nephew really does. He makes this little face that's just like that. Oh my gosh, he's so cute. I love the shimmer. And what? Do what? Oh. He really is. He's just so shimmery and. I love the ears, the way the ears are sculpted, like, it's like perfect. Uh, I love her. Yes. Yes. I want to say a huge thank you to my patrons from Patreon. Lindsay S., Leah W., Doreen Z., Janice H., Mercedes W., Cindy K., Bear Sunflower, Diane B., Kelly L., Shorna R., Stephanie W., Shalane C., Penny P, Louisa's Knit Knacks, Marty G, and Lynn. Your support means so much to me and helps me continue bringing you great Dolly content. For more information on how you can become a supporter of this channel, check the link in the video description. Thank you!